Today we're going to talk about differentiability and continuity. Now we've already defined continuity, but today we're going to look at what it means for a function to be differentiable and then show a result that whenever a function is differentiable, it must also be continuous. So just a quick uh, review before we start differentiability um, is uh, let's put up the definition of continuity just uh, as a quick review. So a function f is said to be continuous at a point x equals a if the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to f of a. Right? So recall that as long as the limit as, your appro as x approaches a of f of x is equal to the actual output at a, then the function is continuous. So for example, there's several things that uh, have to be satisfied for this definition to work. First of all, the limit on the left-hand side has to actually exist. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to have some definitive value. So that w might look like a function like this. So here, as the x values are approaching the point a, the y values are approaching some limit l. Right? Now, in order for the purpose of computing the limit, the actual value of the function at the point a is irrelevant. Limits only capture the behavior of the function as the independent variable x gets closer and closer to a from either side. So as x is getting closer to a, the y values are getting closer to some y value l. Um, so in order for the function to be continuous, in addition to this limit existing, the function must also be defined at the point a. So there must be some value for f of a. So the right-hand side has to be defined. And f of a has to equal l. So this missing hole here has to be filled in with that point itself. So for example, you can't have something like this. So here the limit as x approaches a exists. It's equal to this y value right here. But f of a is different than that limit, so the function is not continuous at that point. Um, if you have a jump discontinuity, so something like this, it's also not continuous because the limit on the left-hand side does not even exist. Because you have one limit as x approaches a from the left and a different limit as x approaches a from the right. And in order for the limit to exist, it has to also exist as x approaches a from the left, and that has to equal the limit as x approaches a from the right. So both approaching a from either side has to give you the same uh, limiting value for the output. So basically this is how we define continuity. The limit has to exist and it has to equal f of a. Now we say that a function is differentiable. So a function f is differentiable at the point x equals a if the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h exists. Now you'll recall that this is exactly equal to the limit definition of the derivative evaluated at a. So this is literally what we say, what we call f prime of a. So in other words, a function is differentiable if the derivative exists at that given point. Now this is differentiability at a point, and of course we can extend this to a differentiability over a domain or over a particular interval. So a function is differentiable on an interval. <clears throat> so for example, f is Diffable, differentiable on the interval from a to b if f is differentiable for every point 
x contained in the interval from a to b. So in other words, as long as the differentiability criterion is satisfied at every point on an interval, we say that a function is differentiable over the entire interval. Now, with continuity, we have a very kind of intuitive uh, feel for what it means to be continuous. In particular, a function is continuous as long as you can draw it without lifting up your pencil. If there were to be, if I were to place a hole in the function like this, the function would fail to be continuous at that point, right? Because you have to lift the pencil to hop over that point to get to the next point. Uh, maybe the output might be even up here, or maybe it's even undefined. So what does it mean for a function to be differentiable? How can you spot that property by just looking at the graph? And the answer is that it has to be something that mathematicians call smooth. So in other words, this is differentiable, but this is not differentiable everywhere. So at each of these points where you have a jagged edge, here, 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 each of these points, the function fails to be differentiable. Right? So this makes sense because of how we introduce the derivative. So the, the idea behind the derivative is that if you have um, a function, so let's do a graph like this. So we have an uh, x-axis. So we have some function like that. So this is f of x. Um, so recall that when we introduced the instantaneous rate of change, we said that if you zoom in, So let's say we do a zoom in view right there. So we capture this. So let's capture this image, copy, paste. And we zoom in, so we're losing a little bit of re resolution, but then let's do another capture right there. And then let's take that one and then zoom in on that. So we're, I'm losing a little bit of resolution here. Yeah. But you kind of see the, the, the whole idea. I guess that's not going to... So you kind of get the, the idea. So I took this point right here, I zoomed in, and the graph looks a lot straighter. And then I zoomed in again, and you know, it looks, you know, like a straight line going through there. Well, I guess what I drew doesn't look very straight, but the idea is that the graph looks very, very straight. So the more you zoom in at a point, you can eventually zoom in so, so close to the, the function that any sort of curvature of the, the, the graph itself is not visible. So if you zoom in close enough to a point, it will appear like a straight line. And that line, if you extend that line out indefinitely, that becomes the tangent line. So the tangent line to this point is something, well, I guess that's more like the tangent line to this point, maybe. So I've got it close, uh, but you get the idea. So if you take one of these points and just extend it out, you know, you zoom in close enough and eventually it looks like a line, you extend that line out, that's the tangent line. Now, in order for this to work, when you keep zooming in, eventually it has to look like a line, right? So when you zoom in closer and closer and closer to the point, eventually it has to just look like one point with a line passing through. So when you zoom in close enough to any point, that's what the graph has to look like on a microscopic scale. So there might be a very, very small amount of curvature, but if you keep zooming in, that curvature basically vanishes so that it looks 
gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to a straight line. And the straight line that it approaches as you zoom in further and further and further is the tangent line. So in order for this to work, you have to zoom in to the point and get a, a line passing through that point. Now, if you have a function with a jagged edge, it won't matter how many times I zoom in. I zoom in here, let's blow that up, and I still get that jagged edge. If I zoom in here and blow it up, I still get the jagged edge. So whenever you have a jagged edge in the function, the function cannot be differentiable because it, a jagged edge cannot have a tangent line. Because when you're at that jagged edge, what would the tangent line be? What would the slope be? Would it be this, this slope? Would it be this positive slope? Would it be some slope in between? You know, it, it, it's, the slope is, uh, is completely undefined at the point where you have a, a jagged edge. Um, so practically, the notion of differentiability is that the function doesn't have any sharp corners. So if a function has a sharp corner at a point, at the point where there's a corner, it, it's not differentiable. So let's apply this definition and take a closer look at uh, differentiability in terms of a specific example. So let's consider f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So this function looks like the following. So there's my, there are my axes. Here's my x-axis, and then the function actually looks like this. Something like that. Actually, the second one, let's do this a little bit closer. Yeah, so something like this. So that's the absolute value of x. So this is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Now notice that if x is positive, the slope here is equal to plus 1. And for the negative values of x, the slope is equal to minus 1. And at the origin, the slope is undefined. So basically, this fails to be differentiable at x is equal to 0. So this function is not differentiable at the origin. To prove that, well, let's consider f prime of 0. By definition, it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of h minus the absolute value of 0 over h. So it's the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of h over h. Now what does that one look like? So let me do a separate graph down here. So those are my axes. So this function is equal to plus 1 if x is positive and negative 1 if x is negative. So this is not filled in at those points. So this, these points are not filled in. So basically, um, and then this is undefined at the origin because you get 0 divided by 0. But for positive x values, you get plus 1. And then for negative x values, you get minus 1. So this is a graph. Actually, I guess I should call this h. So this would be a graph of absolute value of h over h. Um, right, because if h is positive, absolute value of h will equal h, and h over h is equal to 1. If h is negative, h over h will always be either plus or minus 1. The absolute value will cancel out the sign for one of those factors, and so you get minus 1 down here. So the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of h over h does not exist. 
And the reason it doesn't exist is because so this does not exist. You can say that the limit as h goes to zero from the right of absolute value of h over h is equal to plus one, and the limit as h goes to zero from the left of the absolute value of h over h is equal to minus one. But in order for the limit to exist, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to equal each other, and clearly they don't. So this limit as h goes to zero by itself does not exist. So therefore, the absolute value of x fails to be differentiable at x is equal to zero because the derivative is undefined at x is equal to zero.